welcome back to Cardiac Radio for Teens. For those of you who don't know, I'm Bia, and Cardiac Radio for Teens is a place where teens can talk to teens instead of talking to an adult, uh, sort of like a teacher or a parent or whoever it could be. Now that it's summer, we've all been having more time, free time on our hands, and many people tend to have parties or go away on vacation together and do stuff so that they're still able to see their friends. In the summer, especially when you can finally drive, it's so much easier to finally go and see your friends because you don't see them in school and you realize that school is the main part that you were seeing them. So you want to go do something else with them and have fun with them and still be in touch with them throughout the summer. So lots of people tend to have these parties or to go away on vacation together, and which is great because people can reconnect with their friends that they haven't seen in a while and they can catch up on things that they don't have enough time to do now since they don't see each other every day at school. But sometimes at these parties, especially when we have so much free time and liberty in the summer, there's a negative side to it too. This being getting involved with drugs and alcohol. First off, this does not at all mean that every birthday party you go to, or every party you go to, or every time you're hanging out with your friends, that this happens. And people shouldn't think that, oh, if you're going to a party, that means that there's going to be drugs and alcohol involved. But you never know when there is going to be, so you should be prepared for all... You should prepare for all situations as if it could be the worst possible situation and hope that it's not going to be the worst possible situation. The most important thing is to just be prepared in all cases because you don't know what's going to happen. Even though you may think you don't hang out with people like that or think you're not going to go to a party like that, it's really important to be aware in case you do get into that kind of situation. Another situation with this is you have to forget the stereotypes because anyone can get caught up in these kinds of situations, whether you think they're the smartest kid in the class or you think that they are the delinquent who's going to do it or maybe the delinquent who you think is going to get involved with drugs and alcohol doesn't, but maybe someone else that you think would never ever that nerdy smart person over there wouldn't do that but we have to be aware that these are just stereotypes and that doesn't really define the person anything could happen to anyone and it doesn't matter what they look like or what they wear that's not going to determine how they get into these situations these situations can happen to anyone so everyone has to be prepared for it so with dealing with these types of situations, we have to remember to forget stereotypes and realize that this is something that could happen to everyone. And people say that, oh, that's never going to happen to me. Everyone says that until it actually happens to them. Because you never think it's going to happen to you until it does happen to you. And even the people who are already caught up with it, caught up in it, in drugs and alcohol, and have situations of that sort, even they didn't think they were going to get caught up to it at some point. But now they are. You also can't just be antisocial and not go anywhere because you're scared to get involved with these kind of situations because that's not the solution either. We want to be friendly. We want to have good friends. You want to have fun. But we just have to know how to deal in situations where people might be trying to get us to do drugs and alcohol. And we have to learn how to be able to resist that and to maybe not hang out with that same party group again and find better friends who we can actually have a fun time enjoying while not harming ourselves. We can't just run away from what's happening and what could happen at where we are, wherever we are, but we have to learn from it and learn from previous situations and learn how to deal with it so that we can still have a good time, but if the situation does come up, we'll know how to handle it. We have to remember that it could happen to anyone anywhere And peer pressure can be so strong sometimes that even the person that you would think definitely wouldn't, maybe you think that, oh, I'm definitely never, ever going to do that. In the situation, the peer pressure can be so strong that it's so hard to say no or to get out of it. And that's what's really important to learn about. And it's also very important to realize that if these people are pressuring you into doing bad things, into doing harmful things for yourself, then maybe they aren't really the people that are your closest friends because your friends don't want to put you in any danger. They won't want, they don't want to put you in harm. So maybe these people that you think are friends, but they're actually bullying you, peer pressuring you into doing bad stuff, maybe they might not be exactly who you want to associate yourself with. So before we get into the main topic about drugs and alcohol, I'd just like to take a little time to talk about the peer pressure that comes along with that, and which usually gets a lot of teens started. So I want to read a message 
from the book, The Bible, 50 Ways It Can Change Your Life. And this one is called Choose Your Associates Carefully. You can spot a bad can you spot a bad person on the street? Can you look at someone and tell whether they have good intentions or not? Solomon, the author of Proverbs 4, understood that the ability to distinguish between good and bad people is crucial to spiritual and physical health. Don't follow the bad examples of cruel and evil people. Turn aside and keep going. Stay away from them. The problem is that cruel and evil people are not always easily identified. It is not like they wear villain costumes in real life. Some hide their cruelty behind massive humor. They say hurtful things and claim they are only kidding. Still others practice their cruelty in secret behind the scenes. They use gossip and lies to run reputa ruin reputations and manipulate others. Before you allow someone else to influence you, try to assert a few things about their character. It's not always easy, but here are a few steps. So that's always already a really good start about it, how these people sometimes, we think they're our friends, we think they're the cool kids, we look at them, they have the nicest clothes, they have all the popular friends, and we think that they're nice. But then when they're trying to do stuff harmful to us, that's when we should know that, oh, maybe that isn't who I should associate myself with. Maybe they don't have that great of intentions. It does get hard because, like I said, these people, they don't wear villain masks and costumes like they do in the movies. So it's hard to identify them, and sometimes you don't know, and sometimes you don't want to believe. Maybe you're like, oh, but I thought we were really close friends. I don't want to believe that they're not nice to me. But sometimes they are, and it's going to hurt, but it'd be best for us to not be next to people who don't want us to be safe and healthy. So the first step is take a look at the people who influence them. What are these people known for? Is it helping others or hurting them? Generally speaking, people of good character surround themselves with good influences. So that's already one thing that can help you to look and see if that person is maybe having ill intentions or if they have good intentions. So if you look at the people who they're with, if everyone else is also trying to pressure you into doing the thing, then maybe if they, they're all not trying to do the right thing to you. Maybe they're all being kind of mean and cruel or they don't know any better but unintentionally they're doing that and sometimes maybe even the single person isn't mean to you but when they're in that crowd of people they're being influenced as well so they're just doing it to fit in with the crowd too so one really important step is to look also at the people around that person who's trying to pressure you another step given is look at their priorities Instead of only listening to what they say is important to them, pay close attention to what they spend most of their time doing. People demonstrate their real, real priorities through their actions. So that's another way that you can tell how people really truly feel that not only what they're saying, but what they're doing. Because sometimes people just say stuff because they think that's what's cool to say. But if you see what they're doing, as well, you might be able to tell more about their character and who they really are. So that if you, c you can tell if they really do have bad intentions or if they have good intentions. The third step is look at the fruit of their labor. Do they leave wounds, betray people in their wake? Do they have good reputations among those whose opin opinions you respect? Has anyone ever tried to warn you about associating with them? If you come to the conclusion that someone is evil, cruel, or just potentially a bad influence, your best bet is to make a clean break, or as clean as you can. Minimize the person's influence on your life by spending as little time with them as possible. Don't be fooled by empty promises or persistence of innocence. If you believe someone is going to impact your life negatively, you have the responsibility to do something about it. Once you use severe ties and protect yourself from bad influence, influences pray for that person ask god to work in his or her life and help turn evil intentions into good god is very good at that so that last part is really important because it's telling you you can just tell if the person has been being mean to you if they've been nice to you how they're acting what they're trying to say 
you can kind of tell out of all these steps what this person truly wants if they have ill intentions if they want you to do negative things if they're trying to persuade you into doing drugs and alcohol or anything that could be pressured upon you or if they're trying to actually help you and to be nice to you and maybe telling you not to do something so you can determine their personality and who they are and then if they are bad influence it says to just okay stop talking to them maybe they're weren't the right person for you and you can just you know keep your distance from them not talk to them as much but then the last part is really important it's to pray for that person because if that person just has bad intentions there's a reason for it there's a reason they're trying to persuade you to to go into drugs and alcohol because maybe they're addicted to it maybe they have a problem with it maybe they're upset that someone persuaded them one time so those people need help so we must pray for pray for them and for them to get help too sometimes it's not really possible for you to physically intervene or to get involved physically with yourself but praying is a way that you can help them without having to physically get yourself involved in their face and their situation people's with these ill intentions they're not going to stay like that forever they are going to turn good so they do need help and by praying and asking for god to help them they will receive help as soon as they're ready for it and they will get better so even though we are worried about ourselves a lot and about us getting to that type of situation the people who might be getting into that situation or are already in that situation we should also pray for them to help them to be able to get out of the situation or to find help so now to get more into the specific topic about drugs and alcohol and how that affects teens how teens get into it which is a really big and serious topic of our time so i want to start with the reasons why teens can get even into these problems and one of the main problems, one of the main reasons they get into it is other people. Whether it's like we were talking about before about other teens, the peer, peer pressure influencing them. Or maybe it's just adults that they see all the time at family parties who are drinking. And they think, oh, it must not be that bad if everyone else I know does it. So it's important to know that even though these people that you know we know and love... They might be doing these things. We might we must try not to fall into that because not ev no one's perfect. So they make mistakes too, and maybe that's their mistake. And we don't want to fall into their same mistake just because we think that they do everything right. Because even adults get things wrong. So we shouldn't just follow and think everything is right just because someone else is doing it. Another big reason that teens get into this situation of drugs and alcohol is the media. Because everywhere we look, everywhere we listen, everywhere we use our senses, we see these advertisements for drug and alcohol. Whether it's through music, through music videos, through TV shows, through movies, especially the higher rated movies like R rated movies. Lots of teens, they really get sucked into that because they see everyone on the media does it, so why shouldn't I? But we have to be aware of taking things off the media because sure they may be real stuff that's happening or you know it's a song what what are you gonna do about it but if you notice on the news and stuff like that they never show anything that's good they show one good thing and then 20 bad things that happen so places on media it's not always the best place to find what's really happening the good stuff because the stuff that pops up on the front headlines they're never the good stuff and we have to search for you have to search really far down to find the good stuff that it's actually happening so we have to be really careful when looking at the media because a lot of it the bad stuff is just right there on the surface and that's what we look at and that's what we get influenced by but if we dig a little deeper we'll find that there's lots of good stuff that goes around teens tend to get really stressed out and they feel like there's no other way for them to be happy but in, to go into these dangerous slopes of getting into drugs and alcohol because they think that's going to fix everything but it's truly not going to so we have to remember that if you're feeling unhappy or you can't find 
anything that you like to do or you're really sad, then you should talk to someone or get help or find something that you like doing. Find a happy habit. Like maybe you like to read or maybe you like to maybe you do taekwondo and whatever it is that you like to do, you should do that and try and enjoy something and do something fun while trying to stay away from the drugs and alcohol and people who might try and influence you to do that. Another reason which I found really interesting, which is why teens get into these situations of drug and alcohol, is boredom. Which is kind of amazing because teens, we always say, oh, we're bored, I'm bored now, I'm bored now, what am I going to do next? But apparently, being bored some teens, they have, they're bored, they have nothing to do, so they fall into these slopes of trying these things. So my suggestion on that is to keep busy, keep your schedule busy with stuff you like to do, find some after school activities that you like to do, keep yourself busy, do your homework, do your sports, do everything so that you don't have time to be bored to get into those situations. Another reason I found is that teens fall into this is lack of confidence. Teens who tend to not be very confident in things that they do, they go to drugs and alcohol because they feel like they can be a little bit more open and more confident when they're under the influence. But this isn't true. We should find different ways to get more confident. Maybe get a new outfit that we like or change our hairstyle or join a club or do something that we can also gain more confidence while not being under the influence and harming ourselves. And also misinformation is really keen to keep on my in, keep in mind because a lot of teenagers we think we know everything and then someone just tells someone else and it's like that game telephone where everything gets messed up and then you end up hearing the completely wrong thing but you're like oh of course they're right and then this misinformation can lead you down really tr tricky slippery slopes so we have to be careful where we're getting our information from where we're taking sources who we're thinking is credible to tell us so what are effects and consequences that could happen of using drugs and alcohol? There's so many of them, but we usually only think of the simple ones. Oh, you know, people overdose and then they go to the hospital, they could possibly die. But there's also a lot more consequences that are all negative that come from drugs and alcohol. When teenagers are under the influence of drugs and alcohol, not only is it physical injuries like you overdose and you have to go to the hospital or you might even die, but there are injuries like due to accidents that if you're under the influence and you're driving, you can get into a car accident or if you walk into the wrong place or some people, if you're around a lake and then you drown, there's so many things that could go wrong just from being under the influence that sometimes people don't think of. You think, oh, you know, it's not like... I'm going to overdose on this, but you could get into another situation like walking into the road or getting into a car accident or whatever it could be that could really put your life in danger. It can also seriously impair you and give you serious disabilities and diseases from transmission of HIV or AIDS and just any disease that you can get, any sickness that you can get, anything you can think of really. Because there's so many possibilities with so much out there that it's safer to just stay away from it all and not be under the influence of drugs or alcohol. And some teens, they want to get into it because they think that their life is going to get better and that if something happens to them, it's not going to matter. But their family is going to be so distressed and there's going to be so much health care costs and all this stuff that's going to go into it, that getting into drugs and alcohol is not the easy way out at all. And that even once you die, it's not going to end. You're still going to have so many consequences to face. Another really big consequence is your mental health. Because people think that they're going to get into drugs and alcohol because it's going to make them feel better or feel happier. But in reality... It might make you feel happier for two seconds, and then after that, you're going to be really depressed. You're going to have withdrawals, and you're going to be really dysfunctional mentally, and you won't be able to do anything without that drug, and that's what an addiction is. Many of us, we all learn about these simple 
consequences, not simple, but these common consequences that everyone thinks of, that everyone learns about in health class and wherever maybe we learn in school. But there are actually other consequences that sometimes we don't focus on as much, but are still really important. One thing is academics, especially for teens in high school and you think maybe you're almost going to be done with school and academics doesn't matter but after school you still go on to college which people think is fun but it's still school you still have to learn and if you're getting into drugs and alcohol and you're always under the influence then your grades start to decline you're more absent and it just shows a trend in your academics going downhill and we don't want that, especially if you're going into your last years of high school. You want to show your, that you're awesome, that you're skyrocketing to look good for colleges. And then in college, you want to skyrocket. You want to do good because you want to get a degree. You want to pass. Being under the influence of drug and alcohol is just going to interfere with your ability to learn. With all, that, all the sources that we have to learn from, we're just not going to be able to learn because we're under the influence and that's really such a waste. Some people are much less fortunate than us and they're just dying to go to school. They love school. They want to learn. They want to be able to have what we have and then us who have it, we just throw it away. So it really is a waste that we really have to appreciate and not just throw away, especially not to drugs and alcohol. And if you're getting sucked into drugs and alcohol and that pure pressure it's just going to suck you into a worse groups of people surrounding you like we were saying it before about how choosing who you associate with and if you fall into that and you're getting sucked into these people this negative group it's bound that you're going to kind of morph into them and it's not going to be a positive effect on you which is why it's good to try and prevent it before to cut the break cut it them out before you even get into that situation and people who are using drugs and alcohol as teenagers they often tend to dislocate themselves from school and from the community and to try and drift away from that stuff and school and community that's good it's good to have friends to have family to have a big sense of community around you no matter what anyone tells you you can be sure that getting involved with drugs and alcohol, especially at an early age, there is nothing good about it. There's not one positive side effect. We can list negative consequences of it forever and ever and ever and ever, and they probably people have, and it just goes on and on and on and on, like an infinite number. Because it's never going to stop. There's, they're all negative consequences, and there isn't one positive. So that kind of shows us how bad it really is. Why would we even do something knowing that nothing, absolutely nothing positive will come out of it? Some people may think that a positive consequence or a positive side effect would be like you're getting, in, you're joining that group of friends, you're popular. But if you have to do that to be popular, to join that group of friends, then they aren't really your friends and it's not at all worth it. I'm sure the friends you have who like you for who you are and don't make you do that are much, much, much better than those people who you think are your friends but are making you do harmful things to yourself. And then another really important thing to talk about is how do you stay away from it then? Well, how do you prevent it? So here are some tips for prevention. The one thing that seems so basic and so common sense is that it's to just not be afraid to say no. Just if someone offers you something, just say no. And you'll be surprised sometimes that they expect you to say yes and to give in. And if you just stick up for yourself and say no, they'll be like, okay, whatever, not worth my time. And they'll move on. Just try and stick up for yourself and be assertive and say, no, I'm not going to do that. You don't have to give a reason. You can just say no and walk away. You don't have to explain yourself because they're not worth it. They're not worth that time. Just say no, move away, walk away from those people. You don't have to talk to them. You don't have to associate with them. Another important thing to do is to make connections with people who you like and who you trust, who you can talk to when these situations happen. So maybe if you do get sucked into it once, if you have an adult that you trust, you'll be able to get out of it quickly before it falls into a deep problem. Enjoy life and enjoy just living how you want to live without drugs and alcohol. You don't have to, you don't need that to be happy and it's not going to make you happy if you have it. Just enjoy life, enjoy the life you have, enjoy what you're doing, 
and enjoy the friends th who truly like you, the people who you have around you. You don't need to fit in with those people to be cool or anything. Just truly enjoy what you have, enjoy your life. And by you saying no and you sticking up and you being you, you're setting an example for others. You're being a role model because you're showing others that you can stick up and you can say no and you don't have to succumb to peer pressure. It's your life and you're in control of it. So don't let anyone tell you otherwise because you're the only one that affects what happens to you. You can decide whatever you want to decide. The other people can't. As much as they might try and persuade you, they can't tell you what to do. You're the one who has to decide to do it. So really just stand up for yourself and speak up. And never be afraid to get help. Whether you are already in the situation, maybe you already have gotten into drugs and alcohol, then you don't know how to get out of it, or you don't know what to do. Or maybe if you're scared, you might get into the situation. Or maybe if you don't think you're going to ever get into the situation, but you just want to talk about it with someone so they know where you are, what you think of the situation, then don't be afraid to get help because there are so many people to help you, especially at schools. They have social workers. They have guidance counselors. They have teachers. You have your parents. You have other family members who you may trust enough to talk to. And there's so many people that can help you. So there's always someone to reach out for. And there's always hotlines that you can call. There's resource centers. There's hospitals. There's so many things that you can look out for and get help really, really quickly. So don't hesitate to call someone, to email someone, to text someone, whatever it may be. And if anyone needs any of those kinds of information, kind of phone numbers, find the hotlines, feel free to email me at cardecoratedforteens at gmail.com. And I promise I'll give you a whole list, very confidential that anyone you could call to, resource centers, hospitals, hotlines, whatever it could be. So I'd like to end off with a little last message called trying to please. A no uttered from deepest conviction is better and greater than a yes merely uttered to please or what is worse, to avoid trouble. From the time we were little, children, we are taught to please others. It is a hard habit to break, even when we know we are sacrificing honesty and sometimes integrity by trying to get along. So we say yes or we say nothing when an unfair situation arises because we don't want to rock the boat. We don't want people to think that we're hard to get along with. After we've said yes or nothing too many times, we lose sight of our own values. I won't be mean or offensive, but if I don't say no when I see things are wrong, who will? I'm strong enough to face these consequences if I rock the boat. So that is what's truly important because if you have to change yourself to fit in with other people, to get them to like you, then they're not really truly your friends. They're not going to be the ones who are going to stick with you till the end. Be, be yourself and that's the way that you'll make the greatest friends. This has been Cardiac Radio for Teens. Thank you all for listening.